Good morning everyone and welcome to this tutorial on how to use the Python SDK for Minio. Today we're going to run a Minio server on a Docker container and learn some of the basic methods used to interact with the server in our Python code. Let's begin by ensuring we have Docker installed on in our machine. As I'm running Ubuntu I'll be installing Docker using app so let's go ahead and do that now with sudo apt install docker.io. Now I already have this installed but for you once it's installed Let's also use the systemctl start command just to ensure that the Docker service is running. Now I'm also going to use the systemctl enable command just to make sure that if I restart my machine, the Docker service will come online automatically. Great. Now we can use the docker pull command to download the latest Minio uh, Docker image the, from the official Minio repository. That's Minio slash Minio. Again, I already have this downloaded for you, it might just take a minute. But uh, once it is downloaded, we can then bring our container online with our new image. So let's use docker run, uh, and we'll bind port 9000 on the local host to port 9000 on the container, that's the port Minio server is going to be running on. And I will actually just give that a name, Minio test. Now Minio requires uh, a couple of um, environmental variables for authentication to the Minio server. These are the Minio access key, which we're just going to inject using the dash e command. And we're just going to call that test key. And we'll also add the Minio secret key, which we're just going to call test secret. Now we're also just going to bind um, the uh, data directory, let's just call it mdata, to the data directory on um, our container, which will be the directory we're using as the storage location for our Minio files. So once we've done that, I can use the Minio server command to start the server, and that will be running on slash data on the container. Let's bring that online now. Okay, great. So we should have our Docker container running. So we see now we have our container running up five seconds. Excellent. Now that we have our container online, we can start writing some Python code. So I'm just going to clear that terminal now. So now we can create a new directory, uh, which I'm just going to call Minio Connect. And inside this directory, we're going to set up a virtual environment so that we can install all of our dependencies uh, that are required. So the first thing to do is just to first ensure that we have the vnv package installed. Uh, I already have this installed. Once it is uh, installed there, we can run python 3-m vnv, and we'll just call the directory vn. And we'll see that has been created inside our new directory. Now to activate the virtual environment, we want to execute vnv bin activate. And we'll see here that we're inside our virtual environment. Now this basically just allows us to separate our Python de dependencies from the rest of our system, just for this individual project. Um, to exit out of that virtual environment, we'll just run the deactivate command. But for now, we want to be inside. Because the first thing we're going to do is install the Minio library using pip. So once that has been installed, if I just run pip freeze here, we can see that we have Minio library version 4.0.17. Now for consistency, I'm just going to run freeze again, and I'm just going to pipe that into requirements.txt. So we can see that we now have that in our new directory. I'll just clear the terminal for now and we can open Visual Studio Code using the code command or any editor of your choice. I'm using Visual Studio Code in this case. And we'll drag that along. And you'll see we have our requirements.txt file in here and our VMV directory. Now I'm going to create a new script just called minioconnect.py. So the first thing we're going to do is import the package. So from Minio, import Minio. And also want to just import um, some Minio specific errors. Import response error and look, it already exists. 
Now I'm going to just create a, a function which returns an instance of the Minio client. So the Minio client is an object that we're going to use uh, to execute a multitude of functions against the server. So things like creating buckets, moving files, uh, storing files, downloading files, that sort of thing. So to do that we need to use the Minio object here and as you can see from the constructor this requires an endpoint and also has uh, the access key and secret key as parameters. So the first thing we're going to add in there is our endpoint which is going to be localhost 9000 and access key is going to be access and secret key secret key is going to be secret and for the purpose of this demo I'm also going to turn off the secure option because we're not going to be using SSL to connect to our server okay now as we're going to be running this from the command line we also need an if name equals main block and we can now create our mini or client object so minio client equals get minio client and if you remember our access key was test key and our secret key was test secret when we created our container. Now we can move on to a few examples. I'm just going to increase that a little bit so we can see easier. Now the first thing we're going to do is create a new bucket in our minio instance. So uh, to do that we're going to use the um, mini or client object we're going to use the bucket exists function first of all to check whether the test bucket bucket exists and if it doesn't we're going to go ahead and create it so we use mini or client make bucket test bucket and we'll just try to catch a response error there and we're just going to raise that if that happens. So we should now be able to run this script and this should give us a new bucket in our Minio. So I don't see any errors there and since we bound the uh, mdata directory to, uh, to our, our actual Minio storage directory on the container we should be able to go there and just check and yep yeah, we can see that we've created a new bucket called test bucket in our Minio. Now that we have our bucket we want to be able to upload a file to that bucket. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to echo some random string into a file test.txt and what we want to be able to do is take the contents of this file and upload it to our bucket. So to do that the first thing we're going to do is use the with open command to open that file temp test.txt as test file. Now we're going to use the mini or client dot put object function. Now the put object function you can see here takes a bucket name, um, an object name which is the new file name we want uh, the file to be called after it's been uploaded and the data from the file as well as the length of the file are required. So, so the first thing we want is the bucket name and we know that that is test bucket and I'm just going to call the file minio test.txt so that's the name it will be once it's been uploaded. Now the object is going to be test file and we need the length of the bucket too so to do that I'm just going to import the OS package and I'm just going to use uh, stat data equals OS dot stat and again our temp file test.txt so now that we've stat our file we can use that stat data dot uh, st size and that should give us the size of the uh, test.txt file so we're going to catch a response error once again and raise that if it occurs. So let's go again to our, um, our script and we'll run python3 minio connect. So we're hoping that this will create a new file called minio test.txt with the content content in our test bucket. Let's run that now. If I go to our 
bucket, test bucket, we can see that we have minio test.txt and the length of that file is 8. We just cut that out. We can see that the content is the string content. Now that we've successfully created a file, I just want to show you how we can delete that file. So again, we're going to use the minio client and this time we're going to use the remove object function. Now we see all this requires is the bucket name and the object name. It's very simple. So our bucket, this test bucket, our object, if we remember, was minio test.txt. Okay, now if we try to, well, first of all, let's just make sure we have our file in there, minio test.txt. Okay, now if we try to run that, This should have removed the file. So we go back to our test bucket and we see that the file has been removed. Finally, we're going to um, remove the bucket that we created here. So we're going to remove the test bucket. And now again, this is very simple. Uh, we just need to edit our script, use the minio client object once again, and we're just going to put remove bucket. As we can see here, this just requires the bucket name. So if we pass test bucket in here, what will happen is we will, uh, we should be able to completely remove that bucket. So we'll just check we have our test bucket here. Now if I run that script again, and we go back to our directory here, and we no longer have our bucket. A huge thank you to everyone who stuck with this video up to this point. I really hope it's been helpful to some of you. Uh, Minio is something I use on a daily basis in my day job and some of my personal projects. It's a very, very useful service. And yeah, I, I hope you get some benefit out of this. And if there's anything more you want to know, uh, I'll add a, a, a link to the a Python SDK for Minio in the description, and that should have all the information you require if you want to do any further reading. Thanks again.